from the poplar trees Black bodies swinging black bodies being filled with buckshots black people being tyrannized by forces of white resistance and supremacy that should have long since died. It wasn't just the act of the murder itself that was terrorism when it comes to lynching. The terrorism was also in the fact that they would leave those bodies hanging from trees to warn other black people that this is what happens if you step out of line. The fact is about 600 blacks were lynched in Mississippi and about 4,000 across the South between 1880 and 1940. It was a, it was a common way of, of handling us. I read somewhere that more than 200,000 black people moved to Chicago between the 1920s and the 1950s. For me, both on my mother's side and father's side of the family, folks came from the South. On my mother's side, my grandfather, uh, his people came from Alabama. Same thing was true on my father's side of the family. Like most black folks from the South moved for opportunity and for safety uh, and for security. As I was growing up, it really seemed like almost everybody from Mississippi was coming through our house, the Ellis Island of Chicago. Actually, it was more like a terminal on the Underground Railroad. Emmett's grandmother, Alma Spearman, was instrumental in moving many of our family members from the South to the Chicago area. And the Alma got us to uh, come North. My mother got on a train with five kids, boxes of food, and, and the oldest one being seven. We were afraid of the train because we didn't see the trains that much. And, and this big colossal train sitting up there, we're getting ready to get on it. And, and the smoke was coming out of it. And, and then they make that noise. And so we were afraid of it. And, but we, we got on the train and we came and settled uh, in the place called Summit, Argo, Illinois. Argo Starch Plant was the backbone of the community. You knew that you could come in and you could get a job, even if you didn't have a lot of skills, and you could make an honest living. I was eight years old when I moved to Chicago. My father's name was Moses Wright, but they called him Mose. My father and mother valued education, and they thought that I was going to be sharp and smart. <laughs> so they asked my aunt if I could live with her and go to school. Emmett's grandmother. And she said, send Thelma. When I went to Aunt Alma, Mamie was in her last year of high school. Mama had helped to found the Argo Temple Church of God in Christ, and where she recruited new church members with practically each new Mississippi migrant. She took her strength from her faith, but also from her folks. She seemed to pull on a deep awareness from one fundamental truth. Above all else, you must always keep your family close. Well, my family was like most uh, black families during that time. We all lived around each other. My mother's side of the family, we lived with one of my great aunts, my uh, grandfather's sister. So we lived on one block and around the corner lived my maternal grandmother uh, along with another sister. And around the corner from them lived my maternal grandfather. And I always thought that my paternal grandparents lived far from us, but they literally lived 10 blocks away from us. There was a freedom and an openness and just sort of a, a, a sense of community that we all tried to replicate in Chicago, but you understood when you were in the South that that's where it all came from. We came to call it Argo, Little Mississippi. For us, it meant the joy of the familiar, of family and friends, and of course, runaway ambition. But there was that other half, what people knew they had fled. 
Mimi was sheltered. Her mother was very protective. She begins to hang out with Lewis Till. Lewis Till didn't start out with a lot of advantages. He was an orphan. They had their first date at uh, Berg's truck store. Summit at the time was racially segregated. Lewis took a stand literally by standing up <laughs> and facing the drugstore owner and saying that they were going to stay there. And he allowed them to stay. From that day on, I really admired Lewis Till, looked up to him. She was 18, so they made their plans and they got married. I will always remember the day Emmett was born. It was July 25th, 1941, a Friday. But I was there when he was born. I was at the Antioch Baptist Church in a little piano recital. And my Aunt Al whispered, said, Mamie had a boy. Bobo. That was the playful name a young family friend had given to my baby while I was still carrying him. It stuck. Lewis Till was not a very good husband, according to Mamie. He was abusive, even. In fact, she called the police and had a restraining order put on him. And it was that restraining order, in a way, that got Lewis Till in the army. You broke this restraining order, Mr. Till, and I could send your butt to prison, or you can go the, join the army. And Till chose the army option. After Lewis Till leaves and joins the army, Mamie moves back into the home with her mother, and Emmett he spends his early years in that household. My young cousin, Thelma Wright, was living there at the time. She was about 10 when Emmett was born, and she was always there to pitch in. Oh, I remember Emmett loved bananas. He, he was a good baby. It was like my brother. I pinned diapers on those old birdside diapers. He used to call me Thelma for some reason. When my parents came, they lived in the apartment with Emmett's mother and Emmett, myself and my siblings. And Emmett was the only child, so he seemed to have adored having the fact that there was other young children around. Lewis Till continued to support his family, his newborn son and his, uh, his wife, uh, by arranging to have money sent back from the service. He was uh, stationed in Italy, and Mamie continued to receive money from his pay uh, while he was in the service. When that stopped, one re that's one thing that alerted Mamie, that something terrible had happened. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.